Since the birth of K-pop, close to 1,500 girl groups have debuted, with less than half making it past their first year and even fewer becoming a household name. Around 100 groups debut each year with the same dream of becoming a loved and successful group. The chance of success is 0.001%. The longevity of a K-pop group is 5 to 7 years, if they are lucky. And what's left behind after the fame and glamorous activities is the hardship and worry on how they can support themselves in the future. Hi everyone and welcome back to Midnight Theories. And if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. Today, we will dive into the stories of 9 talented idols as they discuss their hardships, careers, and life after being an idol. Miss Back serves as a singing competition and documentary show which showcases eight beloved female idols who have slowly faded away from the limelight and cast them in the spotlight once again. The show is hosted by no other than singer Beck Ji Young and uses her experience in the industry to mentor the singers with producer and songwriter Yoon Il Sung and actress, comedian, and singer Song Eun Yi. I will talk about the show in further detail later in the video, so prepare for some spoilers and something to wipe your tears because this will be an emotional video. Now let's get into the member stories from debut till now. Soyeon is a former member of one of the best-selling girl groups of their time, Tiara, making her debut in 2009 with the group single Lies. <laughs> Tiara debuted in the age of K-pop where the K-pop girl group boom was in its height, better known as the girl group renaissance which started in 2007. Every K-pop company started pumping out girl groups during this time, trying to get money from the high demand. Tiara was from a small company at the time and broke into the market with their ever so catchy dance track Bo Peep Bo Peep that caused a viral dance craze in Korea, and just about every single they released since then became an instant commercial success. Before I go any further, YouTube seems to really hate the word so I'm just going to censor that word along with other words throughout the video. In 2010, the company added a new member named Hwayang to the group and slowly spiraled into chaos when allegations hit the group in 2012. The company instantly addressed the accusations and tried to clear it up by having Hwayang and the members of Tiara come forward and state the allegations were made up and the rumors were started by netizens. But the public insisted there was discourse within the group and Hwayang was the target by her members. The group was branded as by the incident and were ostracized by the country that they had no confidence performing in South Korea and mainly performed overseas for the years to come. This was to the point where Soyeon confessed on the show she felt they were no longer Korean singers and had no confidence performing in their home country. <laughs> The singer also discussed how deeply this incident affected her and her members and recalled being one of the first groups to receive a 10-minute, also known as a Black Ocean. This primarily happens during concerts or events where multiple groups or singers share the same stage for performances and are given 10 minutes to perform and multiple fandoms are in attendance. When it was Tiara's turn to perform on stage, a large portion of the audience turned their backs to the stage for the full set. This is one of the biggest and hurtful ways anti-fans can protest against a group. The discussion of fan co or fan cosplay was brought up as well. It is when anti-fans would cosplay as regular fans in these fan chats and start off the post by saying something really nice to reel in other fans and the artist and then tie in a nasty comment in the end. This was only the tip of the iceberg of the hate and malicious comments Soyeon received. In 2012, Soyeon was in a major car accident where herself and other passengers were thrown out of a car despite wearing seatbelts and she was severely injured. When the news reported on her accident, she received malicious comments saying, too bad, she should have, and wishing for her. Reading such comments while on the hospital bed shocked her and she couldn't believe people would say such things about her. The tiara craze was insane and had impacted the industry, still ranking as one of the most influential and successful K-pop girl groups of all time. The group was slowly able to overcome some of the pain and obstacles after the rumors were cleared six years later and continued making music till she left the group in 2017. 
Years after her departure from Tiara and MBK Entertainment, Soyeon signed with Think Entertainment in 2020. For a while, Soyeon worked on the sidelines of the entertainment industry, emceeing for her junior's events. She lost confidence because of the overwhelming hate she endured while she was a member of Tiara and felt sorry for her fans that she was not able to perform or do activities for them for that reason. She also felt that she lost herself in the process. She said, when Tiara was active, they never realized how big they actually were until the group were no longer doing events together. When she thinks about Tiara, she knows how successful they were and misses the fans and cheers she once received. Dada, from 21, made a special appearance on the show for Soyeon and shared similar experiences with her. Both groups have tons of hit songs but never felt like they could claim these songs as their own. Dada herself only had one solo song, but it was for CF. If she did not do the CF, there would be no solo song for her to begin with. Both idols, amongst others, fall under this identity crisis after leaving the limelight and can be stuck in this state of limbo. By doing the show, Soyeon is taking the plunge to finally start her solo career and reconnect with her fans. Unfortunately, Soyeon parted from the show shortly after a few episodes. Her statement reads as follows. On the first day of filming, I met the fellow members I'd be working with for the show and I was so happy and excited to see them again after such a long time. That's how we started filming. Of course, I also faced my own share of pain and suffered my own emotional wounds during my career. But I found out that the others had experienced pain and suffered wounds that I could never have imagined. I learned that these younger women were going through great hardship and didn't want to compete with them and take this kind of opportunity away from them when they were struggling. Seda was a member and former leader of one of the powerhouse girl groups at the time, Nine Muses. The group debuted as a nine-member girl group in 2010 with their title track, No Playboy. The young idols were often called model idols for their tall and slender proportions, and of course, most of the members previously dabbled in modeling before their trainee days. Before their debut, Nine Muses participated in a documentary centered around the intense environment and training of a K-pop group pre and post debut. The documentary shed a light on how harsh and strict a company can be. Seda, being the leader at the time, faced almost all the pressure and criticism on her own. If any of the members made a mistake, is late, or speaks badly about the company, the leader is the only one to blame. Most of the members and company believe it's Seda's fault no matter what. There is also one scene where Seda was slapped by the CEO with a rolled up piece of paper. It was shocking to see how comfortably the staff mistreated the young women in front of the cameras and made the fans fear even more how they are treated when the cameras aren't rolling. In the documentary, it is said Seda lost her leader position because she was an unfit leader. Years later, Seda went into detail on her YouTube video reacting to old Nine Muses music videos and admits back on the incident that demoted her position. The group's debut track is bittersweet for the idol. In preparation for the group's debut, the company went over several concepts and costumes, deciding which attire and image that would be best fitting for the title track. The CEO wanted to present the group with a mature and sexy image and demanded outfits to be short and revealing. One of the final outfits included the girls to wear a garter belt. Seda was horrified when she saw the costume and could not compose herself on set. There were members in the group that were still in high school who had to wear the outfit. She was upset seeing herself and the young members in the attire that she cried on set and the filming had to stop several times, thus leading to her demotion for being unprofessional. Till this day, Seda gets emotional retelling that incident. After all the years of training and enduring all the pain and sacrifice she made, Sarah departed from the group in 2014 after her contract expired. After her departure, Seda became a normal civilian camouflage amongst the public. The struggles and hardship do not end after leaving a company or industry. In some cases, it piles on. Seda developed a panic disorder in 2019 and is currently getting treatment for both her depression and panic disorders. 
host and mentor Baek Ji Young was concerned for the idol's feelings and image to be broadcasted if the idol did not consent and reassured Seda that she can talk to the production staff if she had any concerns on the segment being broadcasted. Seda politely and confidently responded that by airing this to the public, she aims to bring awareness to panic disorders to show others that they are not alone. When Seda left Night Muses, she founded her own company, which meant she had to start from the ground up. To pursue her music career on her own naturally led to financial difficulties. Even holding a concert does not generate income and comes at a loss of revenue for her. Seda is currently a YouTuber and makes reaction videos, occasionally vlogs, and showcases a variety of idols and groups on her platform. Her mission is to promote groups on her channel to bring them more exposure. Subin is a former member of Dal Shabit, a girl group known for their cute, useful girl next door concept. The group made their debut in the midst of the girl group renaissance as well and released their first single, Super Dupa Diva, in 2011. Subin discusses how cutthroat and chaotic it was debuting and competing with other girl groups at the time. Nan Da Rain was an acronym for Nine Muses, Dal Shabit, and Rainbow, used to distinguish the three groups constantly competing against each other for music show wins. Seda chimed in and shared about the times Nine Muses received a song from a popular composer at the time. They promoted the song, but Nine Muses never won first place. Same went for Dal Shabit and Rainbow disbanding without a first place win. Subin is grateful for the show. We live such a similar life, but we didn't have an opportunity to talk about it with each other. It makes me think, what if back then, we knew each other well, we could have helped each other more. We also got to take a sneak peek on the interaction between the singer and her fans. Subin is often active communicating with her fans and even holds special events for her fan club members. During her segment, Subin and her fan club reminisce about Dal Shabit's career and show off old items signed by the idol. The topic of Dal Shabit's popularity and rumor surfaced during the conversation. Dal Shabit's fanbase was gradually increasing. More fans would show up to events and concerts, up until the nasty rumors were made about one of the groups and their fan bases. The fan war began when Dal Shabit and B1A4 did a collab performance for one of the end of the year award shows. Both fan bases were not happy with the intimate performance. Less than two weeks later, rumors spread that one of the members refused to give an autograph to a fan. The member then asked for the malicious comments and rumors to stop spreading misinformation. When doing so, she called out a specific fandom, which was B1A4's fandom. Allegedly, the fan club was upset that they were targeted specifically and made up the rumors that Dal Shabit's fandom had members of B1A4's fandom. This incident was spread all over the internet and many fans left Dal Shabit's fandom and stopped supporting the group. The rumor was indeed false, but it damaged the girl's reputation from then forward. Subin also opened up about her struggles during her early years. At the age of 15, Subin lived in Seoul on her own to become a trainee. It was a financially hard time for her and her family. Her parents were getting divorced and she did not want to rely on her parents for income. When she ran out of money to pay for rent, she went to sleep in a restaurant that was open 24-7 and she would visit the sauna to clean up. After making her debut, she made sure to take care of her family and now live a more comfortable life. Subin is now a solo singer and songwriter under the name Dal Subin, using Dal to honor her past group. The young singer subsequently left Happy Face Entertainment after her contract expired and has since then opened up her own company. She has started releasing music once again and is even closer with her fans than ever before. Gaeyoung is a former member of Stellar, most known for their racy image. The group debuted in 2011 with their song Rocket Girl. Members were told they debut and hold the image of an innocent girl group similar to A Pink. The market for innocent girl groups was already saturated, and Stellar got lost in the mix of hundreds of girl groups already fulfilling the demand. The company began losing money trying to maintain the group 
and felt it was imperative to change Stellar's image overnight. With their marionette comeback, the girls presented a 19 plus concept with revealing clothing and scandalous imagery. According to Gaeyoung, the members were unaware of the music video imagery. Gaeyoung explained, the members received a script on the content of the video and what scenes they must act. The contents of the script were big enough for the members not to question the intentions behind the scenes. There was a scene in which a member spills milk. The script said, the character misses her ex-boyfriend. She tosses and turns in bed. She wakes up in the morning and drinks milk. We thought, oh, she must be drinking milk because it's the morning and she just woke up. So the member was filming the scene and drinking milk. And the director told her, try spilling some milk. She thought, it must be because the character is exhausted. So she ended up spilling some milk. Kang explained, that because of the backlash the group received from that video and the true intentions of those scenes, the member who did the specific scene is traumatized from drinking white milk ever again. On Miss Back, Gang retold the incident behind the infamous album photo shoot that caused great backlash from the public. For their vibrato photo shoot, the girls had several outfit changes and were coerced into a more revealing outfit for the shoot. When we were preparing for our comeback with Verbato, they told us on the day of the shoot to try on these revealing new outfits. We said, there is no way we can dance while wearing these outfits. They replied, just try them on. Why would you say no without even trying them on? So we tried on the outfits and took only five photos or so wearing them. Then after looking at the photos, we said, see, these outfits are too much. They told us, Okay, change into something else. The company told the girls they'd edit out the photos if they were not comfortable with them being publicized. And the girls trusted them only for the photos to surface as teaser pictures for their album. After we saw that they had been released, we called our agency and argued. What happened? They said, didn't you know? Okay, then we won't do that kind of thing from now on. But what could we do? The photos had already been released. She also revealed that she only accumulated a total of 10 million won or a little under 9,000 US dollars for her seven years of Stellar activities. Stellar's fanbase expanded with their marionette comeback and pretty much set in stone their image they'd carry even past their idol career. Till this day, the group and Gan herself receive unwanted provocative messages, sponsorship offers, and explicit images sent to her on the daily. Malicious comments and rumors also followed the group. There were rumors back then that Stellar liked to smoke and go clubbing. When people would find out that it wasn't true, they'd be in disbelief because they expected the girls to act the same way they would see them on screen. Gang said, There is nothing wrong with going to a club, but if someone said that a girl group with an innocent concept had gone to a club, people would say, no way. On the other hand, if someone said that Stellar had gone to a club, people would say, I'm not surprised, I knew they'd be like that. And when people heard that none of the members smoked, they would respond, that's definitely not what I had expected. It seems like people have the idea that Stellar looked like they would enjoy those kinds of things. Gang professed, when I was on stage, I thought of our performances as acting, the same way you act in a drama or film. People seem to think, oh, she must be like that in real life as well. That was really hard for me. I'm not that kind of person. And yet, because of one concept, the whole world seems to see me as this type of person. When the group would venture out from their concept, fans would rage and tell them that they are stellar. They are supposed to do sexy concepts. Gang now works at a coffee shop and tries to live a modest life after leaving the industry, but the pain and trauma still remains. And her past image she has tried to erase still follows her. Traumatized from her idol days, Kang tried to hide herself from the world and can't bear to wear clothing that show her skin or tight fitting. She prefers to wear long and unfitted clothing to not stand out and hide her shape and skin. Her mother and brother also spoke out on the marks it's left on the family. Like every other parent, the mother wants to boast about her daughter's achievements and career, but as soon as people search up her group's name, they say, why would your daughter do this? Before appearing on the show, Kang swore she would never return to the industry, but is now using the show to take the plunge and gain back pieces of herself she lost once before. 
After her episode aired, Pascal was under heavy criticism for forcing such concepts and image on the Young Isles. Stellar's former CEO did an interview after hearing her claims and tried to rebuke her allegations. He stated, Stellar started off doing cute concepts, but sexier concepts began trending in the industry, so we also gave it a try. We, as an agency, held multiple meetings on how to approach the concept though. Back in the marionette era, the members didn't have any problems with going in that direction. While members did think the outfits to be excessive, they also did give consent to use the photos as teasers. He ended the interview by saying that it's Gang's fault for their disbandment. He also shared the interest in taking legal action against the show Miss Back for quote, spreading false information. This interview added more fuel to the fire and enraged fans and the public even more, further cementing their stance with the idol. Reina is a member of After School and their subunit Orange Caramel. After School was one of the first groups in K-pop to adopt the graduation system, meaning when members leave the group to pursue other opportunities, new members join the group to fill up any open spots. In Reina's case, she joined the group with After School's mature and sophisticated single, Because of You. Months later, Cletus would create After School subunit, Orange Caramel, with members Nana, Lizzie and Reina. The trio would portray a far different concept with bright and fairy tale like concepts, paralleling After School's mature, sophisticated, and sexy concept. When Reina first saw the costumes they'd be wearing for their Magical Girl track, she was in disbelief comparing it to gift wrapping paper. <laughs> Reina had a successful career being in both groups, but she wanted to challenge herself and began to pursue a solo career. Her album sales did not project her expectations, and after a month of promotions, her solo career ended. Her once heavily booked idol activities began fading. To fill the void, she began gaming as a form of escapism for her unsuccessful solo career. Streaming on a public platform, her comment section can turn into an open battlefield for malicious comments when anti-fans enter her stream. There are also times where the idol cannot hold in her anger and must stand up for herself. Once leaving Plitus, Reina became an independent artist and began to manage herself, meaning she must prepare and manage her own schedule. This was new territory for the singer since her company used to schedule and book all her activities. She had never faced these situations where she'd have to find jobs on her own and feel the rejection of not being selected for certain opportunities. The idol proceeded to compare her idol aspirations versus her current situation. She gave the analogy of her idol career as a grading system. Since I became an idol, my life is always graded. There's a long list of work. I needed to do everything well. She continued, even when I got first place, I thought I have to do better next time. This kind of happiness doesn't last long. Got first place, momentary happiness. Then I think about the next one. When it didn't do well, or I can't do it well, I can't feel that happiness again. Dana has a YouTube channel where she posts covers when she's not streaming. Right now, she can only post covers but wishes to continue her music career. The singer often reminisces on her active years and is brought back to her present reality when she sees her past groupmates thriving in their respective fields. She feels a setback in her career and is hoping with the show that she can find motivation and jump back into the industry, relaunching her career once again. Solyu debuted as a member of Crayon Pop in 2012 with their song Saturday Night and later started the jumping craze in South Korea due to their viral hit song Bar Bar Bar. The viral song elevated the group's career and kept them busy by having at least 10 different schedules a day, practically living in a van for long periods of time because of how much they were traveling. The group was marketed as comedic idols for their unique and wacky concept and easy to market with their family-friendly image and the ability to make themselves look like approachable everyday civilians. Soyu stressed that the style of music the group was producing did not suit her voice. She felt restricted singing in a higher register and detests the fake voice. After releasing multiple albums, the group slowly started losing relevance and album sales declined significantly. 
In February of 2017, news was released that Soyul had married Moon Hee Joon of HOT, and in May of 2017, they welcomed their daughter into the world. The couple became the first ever idol couple to get married. Weeks after giving birth, news was released that Solyo would be leaving Crayon Pop and the group eventually disbanded soon after. The singer now lives as a dedicated stay-at-home mom, taking care of her family, but still longs for the day she used to perform on stage. She explains that there are many girl group members over the age of 30, like herself, but because she is now a mother, it made her passion difficult to navigate. She has adopted the roles of a mother and wife and has lost her identity in the process. She hopes this experience will reignite her confidence and use it as self-healing. Yujin debuted as a member of the short-lived girl group The Ark. Hundreds of girl groups come and go, and The Ark was one of those groups, only lasting a total of three months. The Ark debuted in 2015 with their emotionally charged song The Light. song did not do as well as the company had hoped, but they did get recognition from netizens connecting their music video as a memorial to the tragic Soul Fairy incident. The ARC gained most of their fanbase through busking events and their boy group covers. Even BTS reacted to their cover of Boy In Love. The group grew a large international fanbase, and fans were excited to see more from the group. Unfortunately, after a few months of promotions, Yujin, their main vocalist, developed vocal core nodules. This led her to leave the group, and without a main vocalist, the company was forced to find a new vocalist, but ran into other difficulties, and led to the ARC's disbandment. At first, she felt embarrassed to return to her hometown after the disbandment, and secluded herself. She said, Since there are people who have repeatedly experienced the pain of being unable to debut, I'm not the type of person to frequently say I'm not having a hard time, but to be honest, it was really hard. I was afraid of running into people I knew in my neighborhood and hearing them say, Why are you here? So I didn't go outside and lived in seclusion for a while. Once recovering from her injury, the singer pursued her education and majored in music. During this period of time, Yujin was at a crossroads and weighed the options of going back to her singing career or becoming a vocal coach. Soon after, the artist got into contact with her current agency and is now signed under MOT Entertainment. Yujin recently competed in The Voice of Korea 2020 and shared, After becoming a solo artist, the pressure to carry a performance by myself was really big. I also lack confidence in myself. That's why I thought it would be good to break out of my shell and go out on The Voice of Korea 2020. Since they only judge your voice, it's a program where you receive recognition for your skill even if you just passed a blind audition. Currently, Yujin now works as a part-time food delivery driver, PC bong worker, and vocal coach. She is not financially stable and cannot pay her bills on her own through her music. To not rely on her parents, she is forced to work all these jobs to make ends meet. She is also now a solo singer under the stage name Male. Her current goal is to become a singer who receives love and recognition from more people. Nada is a former member of What's Up that debuted in 2013 with her title track, What's Up. <laughs> the girls were designed to be a hip-hop girl group and would bring twerking to K-pop. They grabbed the attention from the public for their scandalous dance moves, beautiful tan skin, and revealing clothing showcasing an image rarely seen by K-pop girl groups at the time. The group was not well received by the public and were heavily criticized. WhatsApp continued to do music as a seven member girl group up until 2017. Reports of Nada and her company at the time, Mafia Records, were in dispute over unpaid wages. Headlines were made that the rapper had not been paid for her unpretty rap star activities that she participated in 2016, and the money went towards her training debt. When Nada brought up the conversation of payment with her company, she asked where the money went. When they continuously danced around the subject, she knew something was going on. Nada says, I was curious if I was really receiving the accurate amount stated in the contract. I had been asking the agency for two years now. The agency said they didn't have money, so I wanted to know how much they had been making. I waited patiently for two years. I asked about the statement when I first debuted. 
I believed it when they said the agency was having a hard time financially, so I waited. Finally, after three years, I received a statement and it wasn't clear. A representative of Mafia Records released a statement. Right before the Lunar New Year holidays, NADA submitted a preliminary injunction to cancel our contract. We have been having issues with NADA's payments since the end of last year. Because the company's return on investments is low, we were not in the situation to pay her and made this very clear. But she continued to participate in club events and do other jobs without our consent. We are preparing to submit a preliminary injunction to prevent her from doing any further activities. Nada fired back and replied, The agency is distorting the truth. I am sorting out the legal aspects with my lawyer in charge. I consulted with the company to decide on my next activities and sent in official documents to prove my losses, but they didn't listen to me. When Nada and her members asked the company about their financial situation, they asked the company to show evidence of the revenue settlements. Nada then asked the company to terminate her contract, but they refused. During this time, WhatsApp was preparing for a comeback, and this scandal hit the company hard. Despite the lawsuit, the company pushed forward with the remaining members and made a comeback. Two other members of WhatsApp also pursued legal action terminating their contract with the company. After a two-year-long legal battle, Nada finally won against Mafia Records and was able to pursue her career as a soloist. In episode 6, Hayden joined Miss Pack as a special guest for the duo challenge. Hayden is a member of EXID, a girl group that shook the nation for their song Up and Down. The girl group debuted in 2012 with their song Who's That Girl with the six member lineup. Hayden was originally planned to debut with the group but was cut last minute and was only added after three members left two months after their debut. The idol made her official debut with the group for their I Feel Good comeback. The group's album did fairly well but did not generate as much money as the company was hoping for. Banana Culture gave the group one last chance to release a song. If this album did not do well, the company would have no choice but to disband the group. With this ultimatum in mind, the girls intensely prepared for their comeback as if their life depended on it. EXID released Up and Down to test the waters one last time. Originally, the song flopped once again, not even making it to the top 100 song on the gotten charts, and the girls already knew that this was the end of the road. But what they didn't expect was a miracle to emerge. After months of the song declining on the charts, a fan cam posted on the internet started making its rounds over social media. The video was passed around so much that it went viral and completely took the nation by storm. The fan cam was of Honey performing their song Up and Down. This is the legendary fan cam that made history, known for saving the girl group from disbandment. This video was such a hot topic that it made the song chart to the top 10 songs in real time. And as of now, the video has amassed 33 million views to date. The group that was once lost in obscurity became one of the trendiest girl groups now known all over Korea. In 2019, reports of the girl group disbanding surfaced. Although the group has not disbanded, each member is currently signed under different labels and are doing solo activities. Hidden has opened up that doing solo activities has been a challenge after no longer being active in a group, a very familiar feeling the other participants can relate to. She expresses that she's the type to get nervous. The dynamics of a group to solo is very different. When others would miss an event or something within the sort, the other members would fill up the spot. Now she has to do everything herself and cannot rely on anyone else. For Hayden, she has a lot of free time. She has picked up a few hobby and skills here and there and is currently working as a server in a restaurant. She has slowly transitioned to a slow paced regular lifestyle. The EXID members still try to meet up together whenever they get a chance. During her segment, the EXID members express what it's like working on their own. Honey shared that she has no one to share moments with, like they once did. Ellie added that because they were always together, they always had someone to talk to and talk out their problems. Hayden feels a lot of burden now working on her own. She carries it with her and it keeps feeling like it's getting bigger. I always have a mental breakdown. Mentally, I was like, what should I do? No one is here to help me because no one is beside me. 
She took comfort being around her members and on stage with them, but now it feels like this empty void and challenge she must face on her own. Participating on Miss Back will be a huge step for the idol, but with the words of encouragement from her members, she is able to take the opportunity in front of her and take on the challenge. Miss Back was a show that gave these singers a second chance to reach their dreams once again. Although it is a competition, there are no eliminations. The girls would all compete each week to win a live song. Almost all the members have expressed that their groups all respectfully have their own hit songs, but they cannot sing them without feeling like it's only the group's song. With these life songs, the women are able to sing them freely and claim them as their own. Yujin was the first contestant to win a life song on the show and was presented with an outstanding contract. A lawyer was present at the time and presented her with a contract about the profit distribution. Excluding the expenses, Hyujin will receive 50% of the song's profits. This is a huge deal. Even producer Il Sung said there is no contract like this in the industry. Even singer Baek Ji Young chimed in and said she has never received a contract like this before. Several idols in the industry have expressed the horrible contracts they've signed where the company benefits more than the artist and have commonly referenced the idols receiving between 30 to 40% shared amongst the members. So for Yujin to receive half of the profits is an incredible deal. On the show, the singers did a promotional photo shoot. The concept for the photos was to first showcase a certain past image they wanted to escape and replace it with the image they want to present themselves from now on. They also were able to fill the void they once had of performing and working on their own. The idols shortly got to promote as a group and did several activities and performances that current idols do today. These nine women with similar experiences were able to unite and share their most vulnerable stories, healing and growing from these experiences. I can't wait to see what the members will do in the future and eagerly await. What are your thoughts on the show and these experiences the members face during their careers? Also, if there was a season 2, which idols would you like to see in the next season? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay.